It's been a little while. It's been a while since I've done an unholy rant. And I've been sitting around, racking my brain, trying to think of what films I should attack, what films I should go after next. And then I remembered, oh boy, (laughs) Jonah Hex. When people crap on the current state of superhero movies and how supposedly bad they all are, I'm not going to disagree 100% with people, especially because I've had my fair share of complaints on some of the more recent superhero movies. But it's easy to forget that it's been so much worse. It's easy to forget that DC used to make so much worse movies. This film was directed by Jimmy Hayward, who, as far as I can tell, hasn't directed anything since 2013. Did this kill his career? (laughs) I mean, after seeing this movie, if I was him, I probably would quit directing as well. It was also written by Neville Dean and Taylor, who that those names probably sound familiar because they wrote and directed The Crank films. They also did Ghost Rider 2 Spirit of Vengeance. So probably a mixed bag in their lineup, but this one, fuck. This also might be a reason why you don't hear those two names as much as you used to. So the very beginning of the movie, we see that it starts during the American Civil War. Oh boy, putting real life events into a comic book movie can go one of two ways. One, it could be great because if the quality is there, if the writing's there, and if the character is likable, lovable, if the movie is good, then it works. But if it's bad, then it makes you roll your eyes and think, why bother? <laughs> you see that the commanding officer, Quentin Turnbull, who is played by John Malkovich, by the way. John Malkovich, let me just get this out of the way. Great actor and somebody that I personally have been dying to see as a villain in a superhero movie. And then I forgot that he's in this film. For years, I would hear rumors that he was originally going to play the Vulture in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4. And I don't know if that's 100% true or not, but fuck. The only reason why we probably got him in this role in this movie is because that Spider-Man 4 never happened. Thanks a lot, Sony. (laughs) John Malkovich, he orders Jonah Hex to burn down a hospital. Jonah Hex obviously refuses. All of this, his best friend gets killed. His best friend, who's also John Malkovich's son. Oops. So that causes a big conflict. And you see that not only does John Malkovich, but his enforcer, a character named Burke, who's played by Michael Fassbender. Holy shit, Michael Fassbender in this movie. Now, this is before I think Michael Fassbender was was a name where people knew him by name. But damn. (laughs) Thankfully, he went on to be a young Magneto after this. But this sucks to see this much talent. To see this many good actors in a shit film like this. So for revenge, they go and burn down Jonah Hex's house, killing his wife and son. Sure, we've seen that before. And then they take Jonah Hex and they brand his face and leave him to die. Then (laughs) these Native Americans show up and they use mystic powers to save Jonah Hex. I actually like the idea that Native Americans are maybe of a certain level of power or knowledge of certain uh, even supernatural abilities, but to have them be such in the background, to have them be such side characters, I know we've been here and we've done this, Native Americans especially being presented and treated in a certain way and not given enough screen time to flesh out their characters. They're essentially the magical, mystical sidekicks. So, great. I'm glad in this movie they are good for something. Jonah, 
who is now healed, he cuts his face to remove this brain, which explains why the side of his face looks all mangled and disfigured. And he goes right after John Malkovich, I guess kills him in a fire? This is all in the opening five or so minutes of the film. They rush through all of this. You could argue that all of this could have been its own movie. And I'm not saying that that would have been better than what we got, because I'm sure it would have felt dragged out, drawn out, and it would have been another superhero origin film where you don't get the character becoming the end version of himself until near the end of the movie, and I've complained about that in plenty of other films. But this... Rushing through all of this for a character like Jonah Hex, who's not that well known. I only know Jonah Hex because in Batman the Animated Series, they dedicated one episode into doing a flashback where it was all about the Jonah Hex character. You got his backstory. They fleshed him out more as a character better than this goddamn movie did. And he dealt with Ra's al Ghul. It was a very cool way to integrate Jonah Hex as a character into the history of DC and Batman. This one, not so much. And I guess I should mention the fact that Jonah Hex, the character, is played by Josh Brolin. Another great actor who deserves way more than being in a piece of shit like this. And on paper, I love the casting. On paper, Josh Brolin makes way too much sense especially physically when you see him and then when you see his face burn i'm like fuck yeah this looks like who i would picture to be jonah hex and i'm not even saying his performance is bad his performance is what it is it's just this material this writing this dialogue some of the stuff that they have him saying oh fuck how did he not smack the director in the face and say what the fuck is this bullshit also thankfully josh brolin took comic book movies he gave it another chance and we got him as thanos so there's some silver linings there there is a light at the end of the tunnel for josh brolin we then get introduced to megan fox who plays lila and this is a character that i mean i'm not 100 sure if it's the same character or if she's based on the same character there is an animated short that's in one of the DC animated DVDs where they cover a bunch of random characters and Jonah Hex was one of them. And in this short, in the cartoon, there was a prostitute character that Jonah Hex came into contact with and she's played up as more of a villain. She's played up as somebody that turns on Jonah Hex and ends up kind of being the adversary. She then Jonah Hex actually ends up sort of leaving her for dead. And I don't know if this character is that or or similar to that, but Megan Fox is an absolute good person here. I mean, I know she's a prostitute. (laughs) Not to say that prostitutes can't be good people, but you you know what I mean. She's not an adversary. She's not somebody who uh, you need to worry about as far as being trustful. I think that she's, look, Megan Fox, she's hot. She's great to look at. But she's also not the strongest actress in the world. And so I think if you gave her a little bit more to play with, if you presented her more of a way that traditionally Catwoman would be presented in a Batman movie where there's good in her and you can see that deep down Batman or in this case Jonah Hex can see that she's a good person and tries to bring that good person out of her but she can't help but to go on and do her criminal ways or maybe do some selfish ways until the very very end of the movie where she comes around and and helps out but here she's just the damsel in distress she's just the love interest she's just the girl the hot girl to be in said film. And I know you're casting Megan Fox. So casting her as a hot character. Isn't the craziest thing in the world. But again I'm looking for. Some deeper characters. Some more layered characters. Some characters that could have more depth to them. Silly me. Then you find out that. John Malkovich's character. I guess he's still alive. How? First of all how did he survive that fire? 
It doesn't make any sense. He's just a person. He doesn't have powers. He's not even... He didn't steal, like, mystic powers from the Native Americans. They don't even say that there are a group of evil Native Americans that maybe healed him. That, at least, would have made sense, as dumb as that is, too. No, he's just... He just survived. And you see that he's planning some terrorist attack on the 4th of July. And so Jonah Hex has to stop him. And you get a bunch of other characters, a bunch of other actors like Will Arnett, who I like, but whatever, he's just here. Wes Bentley, who I forever was saying that Wes Bentley I thought was going to be an A-list like, actor. I thought he was going to be a much bigger deal. I don't know what happened. Now you just kind of see him popping up in like small roles or random shitty movies. And it's just like, what happened, Wes Bentley? This movie ain't it. But there's this experimental super weapon, and that's where it kind of gets ridiculous. We're already in Western time. We're already dealing with characters that should not be dealing with like superpower type stuff. The Native American powers is, I think, the most they should have gone with anything mystical. This weapon, I, I just could not care. It just felt like something that was overpowered just because the writers felt like we needed something on that level. Oh yeah, Jonah Hex saves a dog. So this dog ends up following him throughout the rest of the movie because we need another reason to like Jonah Hex. I, I even think... That this dog and pretty much any other situation that Jonah Hex get, gets into, they try so hard to make him likable. They try so hard to make Jonah Hex, like, make it clear that he's a good guy. Make it clear that, no, he's the hero, audience. He's the one that we root for. As opposed to just making him be a cool, badass-like character that we just end up liking because. Or we end up liking because Josh Brolin is so good at it. This character, Jonah Hex, given the situation that he's been in, given what he's been through, you could argue that he should be Punisher level of a of an anti-hero. He should be Punisher level vigilante, and they refuse to go there. They clearly just want to do a generic, standard PG thirteen like superhero movie. Yet a western. What a complete waste and missed opportunity of the genre and this character. There's a moment where Jonah Hex digs up Jeb, a friend of his, and Jeb is played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Now he's a character who's already dead. Actually, he was killed by Jonah Hex, and he resurrects him because he just he wants to have a conversation with him. Jonah Hex has this ability where he can, if he touches it, resurrects a body only for the moments that he's with them to talk to them. And it's, I mean, maybe it's a cool concept. And maybe it is something that happens in the comics. Again, I'm not all that familiar with comic book lore for Jonah Hex. I'm not saying it's a bad concept or idea. I just feel like they threw it in here. They don't do a great job of explaining how the fuck he's able to do this or why the fuck he's able to do this. And you see that Jonah Hex finds the fort where the bad guys are at. And he kills a bunch of the bad guys. But then he gets taken out. Then he gets hurt. Damn near dead again. So the Native Americans once again save the day and heal him again. Why not make the Native Americans the main characters? Why not make them the heroes? Because clearly they're more competent. Clearly they're more badass and they're more capable Again, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you just had maybe one of the characters be a partner of his or be somebody who who is already a vigilante. Imagine a Native American vigilante who's already doing stuff unbeknownst to Jonah Hex and maybe just comes around and helps him. Or it's it's a character that's out there doing things and he can go to him for, for help or go to him for medicine no it's just the same bullshit over and over again and speaking of the same bullshit john malkovich kidnaps megan fox wow the girlfriend getting kidnapped where have i seen that before so yeah i guess lila is just a damsel in distress and he uses that super weapon and he tests it on this town, showing how powerful it is. Again, this plot 
and these lame ass stakes is not something that I found interesting or I found all that engaging. Fuck. This could have been something in and of itself. This could have been something that I think superhero movies need to do more genre like things or just make itself feel different from anything else out there and they dropped the ball i mean I, i'm going to say this more than once i couldn't help but think of that so jonah hex of course he wants to save megan fox so what does he do he goes after them he kills michael fassbender so michael fassbender i mean yeah he's a little goofy and yeah he's kind of crazy but what a waste just a side character just a side henchman And yeah, he does some fucked up stuff, but ultimately just gets killed like anyone else. Jonah Hex surrenders himself in order to save Megan Fox, but Megan Fox is able to free herself, so she's capable. All right, all right, cool. She helps Jonah Hex. They blow up this ship that John Malkovich is on, and that's it. Very anticlimactic. Very much something that I was very bored Almost not even looking at the TV at this point. I was probably falling asleep. So that's why this ending, very much a haze to me. Luckily, though, the president offers money. He pardons Jonah Hex. And then he offers him a job as the sheriff for the entire United States. Wow. You never see the the president actually showing a superhero this much clout this much like hey i'm gonna make you basically my right hand man i'm gonna give you just as much power as i do and you know what jonah hex declines because why the fuck would he want that right he ends up leaving this town because it's not like they might need help in the future if anybody else decides to go crazy and become a homicidal genocidal maniac He even ends up leaving with Megan Fox. So once again, we don't really know a whole lot about her. She's just the hot chick that we're all supposed to be jealous of Jonah Hex that he gets to fuck her now that his wife and son are dead. Also, he has another scene where he goes back to apologize to Jeffrey Dean Morgan again. This is something that if they had done a better job of maybe letting the origin stuff play out longer, play out slightly more i don't need that to be the majority of the movie but if you gave it a little bit more time maybe we could have seen him and jeb their relationship or their friendship or their partnership or whatever the hell they were when jeb was alive so that his death we we could experience and we could see and we could see that maybe the guilt that that has Jonah live with so that anytime he goes back to him, it makes sense. It makes us want to see this character again. But as it stands now, he's just a random dude that can come back alive. This movie, boy, the budget was $47 million. And honestly, maybe that was more back then or maybe it felt like a bigger deal back then. But now... That feels small, and I would almost argue that superhero movies should go back to doing budgets like this because I don't think the budget in this film looks bad or it makes the budget look bad. I think the action is competent. Sure, there's CGI in places where it doesn't need to be because, once again, this is a character that doesn't have superpowers or doesn't have traditional superpowers and doesn't need or shouldn't need a lot of CGI. They end up using CGI anyways, so that's a little rough. But this budget, let's apply that. If anything else, we can learn from Jonah Hex. Let's go for smaller budgets. But even with the smaller budget, it opened at number seven and only made $10 million in total. Wow. That has to be one of the biggest bombs in history. I mean, at least the budget's low. But as far as a superhero movie opening at number seven and only making that, that is brutal. That's rough. The Rotten Tomatoes score, which I don't hold Rotten Tomatoes to be gospel. I don't look at them to be the end-all, be-all for opinions or that, oh, if Rotten Tomatoes has a certain score, then that's the exact overall universal opinion or it should be that way. But I do look at them as a reference just to see where I stand with them. And they have this at a 12%. And I got to say, I agree with that. Maybe even they're being generous because this movie 
absolutely sucks. It sucks. It sucks gigantic balls. And I never want to see this movie ever again. I never want to talk about this movie ever again. I never want to hear anybody mention this movie ever again. Luckily, nobody brings this movie up anymore. And so that's why I feel like when people say that superhero movie is bad nowadays, they forget. But they don't realize what bad is. They don't realize some of the bullshit that I sat through for many, many years. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you've seen Jonah Hex, the movie. What do you think of it? Did you think it sucked? Or fuck? Do you like it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.